the world has completely changed around me. And if I enter this trigger here, the entire world gets completely reset. And if there were more players online, they would all get respawned right in here. Now that we have lists and while loops, it changes everything. I'm not kidding, almost every single one of my scripts needs to be redone. This script you see here respawns all the players in the world, and this is it. It's just this long. How can this be possible, you might ask? Well, it's very straightforward. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at our variables. We have a player list variable. You click new list, select player IDs. I've labeled it player list. Then we have I, which represents just a number that's in motion. We have trigger one and trigger two, so I have two triggers that can trigger this event. When the world is started, we listen to events on trigger one and trigger two. Listen can be found at the very bottom of your events tab under connections. When event trigger enter with players received, so we hear the trigger enter with a player on trigger one or two, we then set I to be the length of the player list. So if you come to your operators tab and scroll all the way to the bottom, you're gonna get length of list. This is gonna tell you how many players are in your world. And then we use a while loop. And what a while loop does is it cycles through looping over and over again until this statement is no longer true. Inside of our while loop, we set i to go down by one so that eventually it's no longer true. If this was always true, meaning it was an infinity loop, then you'd get an error on your debug panel. Then what we do is we respawn the item from that list on self. So what is this a list of? It's a list of player IDs. So we're getting the current i value from the player list on self. And that's right over here we can get item from list. So this while loop is going to cycle through every player in that list because as soon as it finishes respawning this player, it comes back through and now the I has been updated to be one player less and it comes down and does the next player. And it'll do that until this is no longer true. We then reset the world state. And it's important to note that this while loop is all by itself. It does not loop anything around it. But the question you're asking is how do we populate that list and populate it accurately? Well, it's very easy to add a player to the list. When a player enters the world, we add player to player list. That's simply going and clicking add to list, dragging that over, and then dragging player down, and it populates the list with this player, adding them to the list. Then when the player exits the world, we remove them from the list. And this is two stages. First, we can remove an item at an index from the list. That's this code block here. But to get the exact item we want, we need to get index of item. So what you're seeing here is we have remove item at index number, and then we're using this get index of this item. So it's get index of item in list. So we're getting the index of the player that just exited from the player list, and then we can remove that from the player list. And that's it. Very simple, very straightforward. If you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to ask. I'd like to quickly note that you cannot pre-populate a list with objects or player IDs. You need to have an event that triggers it. So when event player enters, that's a great one because it comes with a player ID. When world is started, if you had tagged in all of your object variables that you want in the list, you could then add them to the list when the world is started. If you have a trigger and it goes off on objects tagged cone, and these cones are tagged cone, then when this trigger drags through these five cones, they could be added to a list by simply using the same add object to object list, and you'd put that under the trigger enter with object. That being said, I would use the when world is started option by adding those five objects manually, unless you have more than around five objects. If you've got more than five objects, using the trigger is definitely gonna save you time. Now I'm gonna show you how this works spoiler free. So first of all, if I come in as a player, you can see I spawn in this cube. If I come up here and I stand on the ledge and I jump off the world, this trigger at the bottom of the world is going to respawn me back into the cube and it resets the world state. As another example, you can see the world has completely changed around me. And if I enter this trigger here, the entire world gets completely reset. And if there were more players online, they would all get respawned right in here. It's kind of this ultimate, we're in this together, so we all get respawned together if one person dies. But it's actually pretty important for escape rooms when you get to the point where you need to reset world state, being able to respawn all the players back to the beginning is key. You're gonna be seeing a lot more of lists and while loops. This is just the beginning. They are used absolutely everywhere, and I cannot wait to show you more. Have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.